In this video, I'm going to show you how to manually install WordPress on a web hosting account. I'll give a shout out for my web host, penguinwebhosting.com. They're a good web hosting business and they have good plans and I've used them for a long time and they're very reliable. So the first thing you want to do if you want to install a WordPress site on your web hosting account, you need to log in to the administrative side of your web hosting account. For penguinwebhosting.com, they use cPanel, so I need to log in to my cPanel account. So I'll put in my domain name here. Let's see here, it's dan.coc-cis.com forward slash cPanel. So whatever your domain is, you just put forward slash cPanel on the end, and you'll get to the cPanel. When I hit enter, it'll give me a login screen, and from here I need to put in my username and my password and log in and when you successfully log in you'll see that you're in cPanel or control panel. Now this is an administrative backend to administer your web hosting account. You've got lots of tools in here that you can use to help you. You have a file manager for uploading and downloading files, gives you a nice browser-based GUI interface. You can create FTP accounts if you'd like and manage those FTP accounts. You can back up your website you can create databases here. If you have an account that has this ability, you can create add-on domains to create websites for, let's say, clients that you may have. You can also create subdomains off of your uh, root domain that you've purchased. You can set up redirects and aliases. You can set up email accounts based on your domain name, and you can manage those email accounts. That's nice. You can check metrics to see how many people viewed your website or have visited different pages on your site. It looks like in this web hosting account, there's SSH access. Sometimes you have to request access to this from the web host directly. You have lots of other tools here that you can use as well. You have Ruby on Rails here, Ruby Gems, Perl modules, PHP, different tools that you can use. Now, a lot of these web hosting cPanel accounts will have a tool like Fantastico, which will automate the installation of a WordPress website. But as you can see, this cPanel doesn't have anything like that. It's very bare bones. And so if you want to install WordPress, you have to do it yourself. So to do that, first thing I'll need to do is upload WordPress to my web hosting account. To do that, I'm going to use the file manager. I'll click on file manager. And from here, I need to go into my public HTML folder. This is where all the files go for my websites that I need to create. This is where all my web content goes in the public underscore HTML folder. To go into there, I just double click on the little symbol of a world here of the uh, planet. And now I'm inside of my site. Notice there's a CGI uh, dash bin for CGI scripts and I have a just a home page for my site right now. This is just a simple hello everyone home page with some basic HTML. So this is where I need to upload WordPress. So hopefully you've already downloaded WordPress from wordpress.org. If you haven't, you'll want to download WordPress. You can download it right at wordpress.org. And then once you've done that, all you need to do is upload it into here. To do that, I'll click upload and then I'll select the file. Right now I have it on my desktop. I'll scroll down to it, and there it is, WordPress 4.4.zip, and you can see it's uploading right here. Okay, it looks like it's done uploading, so I'll press go back to my home folder here, and there it is. Now what I need to do is extract this folder. So I'll extract this folder, I'll right click, press extract, and then I'll just click Extract Files. Looks like everything extracted. It shows me the results here of all the files. I can click Close. I could also have clicked on this file and then clicked the Extract button here. So as you can see, it's extracted into a folder named WordPress. If I double click on this folder, inside I see all the necessary WordPress files to build a WordPress website. So I'll click up one level, and I'm going to change the name of this folder from WordPress to Site 1. So I'll select it and choose Rename, and I'll rename it to 
site one for my first website. Rename file. Okay, so now WordPress is in this folder site one. So now setting up this site is as easy as visiting my website, which is dan.coc-cis.com. When I go there, there's my hello everyone page. So this WordPress website is in a folder named site one. So what I'll do is I'll put in a forward slash site one and hit enter. And you can see there's the prompt to install WordPress. English, I'll click continue. And now it says that I'm going to need my database name, my database username, database password, database host, and table prefix. Now, I haven't set up a database yet, so I'll go back to my cPanel. There's file manager, and then here's my cPanel. And to create the database, I'm going to use the MySQL databases tool right here. I could also use the MySQL database wizard if I want, but this one's nice and easy and I like the MySQL databases. So I'll click on it and right at the top it says create new database. The database name will be my username prefix plus whatever name I give it. So it'll be dancoccc underscore and I'll put in here db1 for database1. And I'll click create database. I'll click go back. Now the database has been created, okay, and I can see it if I scroll down, current databases, there it is, but it doesn't have a user, right? So there's the database, DB1, but no user. Now I need to create a user and attach that user to this database with all privileges. So if I want to create a user, I need to use this tool here, add new user. Now, I already have a couple users, but if I wanted to create a user, all I do here is put in, there it is, dancocc underscore, and put in user. And then I would put in the password here and type in the password. Let's just do it. dancocc underscore, let's say user, or I could put admin or whatever. So I'll put user one. So dancocc underscore user one, I'll type in a password. Let's say my pass 2016. And I'll put in again my pass 2016. That's not a very good password, but it'll work just for the moment. So I'll create the user. And so it's done. There's my user. So now I've created a database and I've created a user, and now what I need to do is attach that user to the database. To do that, I go all the way to the bottom, and I click Add User to Database. So I want to add dancoccc user1 to dancoccc db1. And of course the underscores, don't forget the underscores. I'll click Add, and then I need to set the privileges it needs to have, the user needs to have all privileges to the database. So I'll click all privileges, scroll down, and click make changes. When you're done, to verify what you want to do is scroll down here, look at your current databases, you should be able to see your database, there should be a user, and if you click on the user, you should see that the user has all privileges to that database. So that's very important. So it looks like it does. So now that I have that user account, I can go back to home and I can go back to my WordPress setup configuration page and I can move forward. I'll click let's go. And now I can put in my information. The database name, Dan C-O-C-C-C underscore D-B-1. The username, Dan C O C C C underscore user one. The password my pass twenty sixteen. The database host is localhost because the database exists on this local web server. So it's the database is on the local host or on the local web server. Table prefix 
You can elect to change this if you want multiple WordPress installations into a single database, but I'm not going to do that. If I want to do another WordPress installation, I'd put that in another on a on a different uh, database. So I'll just click Submit. And if you see this screen, that means that your user account was able to talk to the database and you're good. All you need to do is click run the install. So now on this welcome screen, you need to set up some basic site information, including your site title. I'll put Dan's site. Your username, this is different from the database username. This is your admin username for your website. This is the user account that will manage your WordPress website. So I'll just put, let's say, Dan underscore admin. Your password, I'll just use the same password again since I'm going to delete it afterwards. My pass 2016. Notice it's very weak. I'll confirm the use of this weak password because it's so weak I have to confirm that I really want to do this. I'll put in my email account. So Dan at whatever it is. Dan's courses, let's say, dot com or something like that. Search engine vis visibility. Discourage search engines from indexing this site. If you're planning on having your site live on the web and you want search engines like Google or Yahoo to find it, then I wouldn't check mark this. All right, looks like I'm good to go. And all I need to do is click install WordPress and the installation is complete. I can log in. I'll put in my login, Dan underscore admin my pass 2016 and log in so I've logged in and successfully and that's wonderful now I'm ready to create posts create pages etc and manage my site I'll close the window open it up again where's my site it's dan.coc-cis Dot com. There's the front end of my website. Nope, that's not it. I'm sorry. It's at dan.coc-cis.com forward slash site one. Uh, there it is. There's my site. This is the front end of my site, and this is what a new install of WordPress in WordPress 4.4 looks like out of the gate. Just some default content in there just to get started. Now, if I want to get back to that administrative portal where I can start adding posts, what I can do is is up here in the URL after the last forward slash I can type WP admin and hit enter and it takes me to this administrative login page let's see if I log out that's what it would look like logged out in other words if I put in WP admin again it looks like this then I put in my username and my password and I'm ready to manage my site. So that's it. In File Manager, we had to upload WordPress, extract it into a folder, then we had to visit that site to start the installation. We also needed to go to cPanel and go to the MySQL databases and create a database and create a user for the database and then attach that user or add that user to the database. Once we've done that, we also have to set the permissions and give it all privileges to the database. If this tool is too much for you, if this MySQL databases tool is a little too complex for you or intimidating, you can also use the MySQL database wizard. And this walks you through it step by step. As you can see, it just prompts you for exactly what you need and it creates it for you. Well, I hope that helped you out and you're ready to manually create a WordPress website on your web hosting account. And this will help you do it if you have cPanel.